roads. We use them to travel, go to the grocery store, to work or to see our family. We are always on the road, and as a result of urbanization, roads tend to be more and more present. According to the French Union for the World Industry, the road network represents today more than 1 million kilometers in France. Furthermore, 88% of all journeys are done by car, and there were up to 38 million vehicles in 2014 in France. Even though roads are useful in many ways, they impact wildlife badly. Have you already seen an animal crossing the road? Oh, souvent. Oui. Euh, biche, lapin, euh, renard. Euh, ben là, mon collègue de travail, il a vu des sangliers euh, derrière l'arbre. Animals are moving to forage or to avoid predators. Wildlife is too slow to cross the road or freezes when it sees the headlight of the oncoming car. The vehicle ends up hitting the animal, generally leading to its death. Have you already hit an animal with your vehicle? If yes, what happened? Yes, a rabbit. I was driving at night, I saw it just before hitting it, and I had no time to break. I drove over it. A wild animal hit me, the roe deer. Et oui, à la paix. Non, j'ai jamais heurté d'animal sauvage. In 2008, up to 18,000 deer, 20,000 boars, and 4,000 hedgehogs died on French roads. What is concretely done to take this impact? Creating models gives us a better understanding of what the different factors involved in road kill rates are and thereby inform us about the best management strategy. Finding fatality hotspots seems to be the best option. First of all, it might be logical to inform drivers about the impact and consequences of their driving. The goal is to reduce vehicle speed. It could be good to have speed cameras or speed bumps to force drivers to reduce their speed at some specific fatality hotspot. Wildlife crossing signs are easily seen. When vehicle speed increases and visibility decreases, it's more difficult to avoid obstacles. Under and overpasses have been suggested to limit road kills and they must be combined with fences. There's a multitude of under and overpasses depending on the target species. Philippe Chavaren explains how they built wildlife crossings on one of their highways. Here, we rather focused on mesofauna like foxes, badgers or minks. We can also find bigger animals like boars. Before starting a new construction project such as a highway, studies on the impacts on biodiversity must be carried out and management strategies to limit this impact must be planned. Under the existing legislation, under and overpasses must be built with the creation of new roads. However, road planners can decide if they want to build them on roads that already exist. Here, the road already existed, so this overpass is an ASF voluntary action. This crossing structure was negotiated with the government and we got some fun. These crossing structures are now used to protect the whole biodiversity. However, there are still many improvements to be done. Wildlife crossing management must be enhanced and more studies should be carried out to know if they reduce rat kills efficiently. We don't have a mortality survey reliable enough to link mortality with the use of crossing structures. However, we are able to count animals and species that use these structures and we have to deal with that. Although those passes do limit the impact of roads in terms of road kills, few studies have been done to understand the impact on animal populations and their dynamics. Even though strategies are being found to limit the negative impact of roads, road kill rate is still high. Have you heard about the Preservation Center in Bux? Oui. Non. C'est où Bux? Located in the Luberon, the Fauna Preservation Center takes care of wild animals injured by human activities. This center is owned by the League for the Protection of Birds and run by volunteers. In October 2016, up to 1,500 animals were brought to the center, mainly because of vehicle collision. 
Injured animals are healed and after a rehabilitation period, they're released into a safe area. Raptors and hedgehogs are the most commonly impacted by the road network. Up to 5% of the wild animals here have been hurt by car collisions. I think this number is underestimated because 90% of the animals hit by a car die right after. The person who finds the injured animal may potentially limit the cost by doing the right things and not making it worse. Concretely, what should we do when we find injured wild animals? It would be ideal to always have a box on gloves or a towel in your trunk. Take the animal, put it in a clothes box, and then call the closest preservation center. Making people aware of how to help is essential for the survival, and the center gives all the necessary information. They receive up to 8,000 calls every year. Yet, many people don't really know what to do if they hit an animal and it is still alive. If it's still alive, no, I never thought about it. I think I will call a vet. I don't know. When you're stressed, I don't know. For many people, the first reflex wouldn't be to call the preservation center. That's why raising awareness is necessary. We have a vet volunteer network in PACA and they agree to provide first aid. When a wild animal is hit by a car, the next 48 hours are critical for its survival. Vets are important to help injured animals when the preservation center cannot take care of them directly. Yet, vets are not used to providing care to wild animals. When we choose to become a vet, of course, we expect to take care of dogs, cats and cows, but we are also led to take care of other kinds of animals. If our network was more efficient than the one we have today, it would be better to save wild animals. I think that taking care of wild animals for free is the minimum we can do to help them since we are degrading their habitats. For Vinci, this commitment is not only important to preserve biodiversity, but also for their own interest. Building wildlife crossings allows them indeed to increase the road concession time, and so to maintain tolls for additional years. They improve their image and they make money out of it. That's killing two birds with one stone. The Preservation Center in Bux receives 100,000 euros from the government. This budget is really low compared to the number of injured animals that need to be healed and fed. The result is that there is a deficit in the budget. The question is, how long are they going to remain that way? Finally, Dr. Pasquazo seems really committed and is willing to help white animals for free. However, some vets charge people to take care of injured white animals. White fauna that are injured because of car collisions are potentially perceived as an additional money maker. Moreover, some vets do not want to provide care and they do not even want to see the injured animal. In conclusion, there's not one unique strategy to limit road kills and the best strategies would be an association of several techniques. Further studies are required to fully understand road impacts. Moreover, the government must understand what's currently happening on French roads. A bloodbath of wild animals. Bigger budget must be granted to those fauna preservation centers that try to make their best to limit this massacre. Finally, some wild animal collisions can lead to car crashes. So, it's not only about saving wildlife, but also about saving our own lives.